Hello, I welcome you today again on our discussion on Indigenous Hands, the Indigenous Voices. It's a pleasure once again being here and I am sure that you all are staying safe and doing all you can to stop the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, as I have been um, talking about in this um, series that we are going to be um, discussing very soon, um, some of the indigenous sign languages. Um, so, I mean, I didn't know we were going to be doing this this soon, but I mean, today we are having um, Mary Edward as she is going to be discussing the um, Adamarobe sign language with, with us. So, I'm going to give you an intro. Adamarobe sign language is an indigenous sign language used in Ghana. And um, Mary Edward is going to tell us more about Adam Rube Sign Language in this intro video of Adam Rube Sign Language. And Mary Edward has been a long-term friend and colleague. She is um, um, a PhD candidate in University of Brighton and uh, she has been doing a very extensive work among a few others in Adam Rube Sign Language. So I am not qualified to talk about Adam Rube Sign Language at all. And so we have the best um, hand, you know, um, who is with us here to talk about Adam Rube Sign Language. And this is going to be an intro video of the Adam Rube Sign Language. And we will go ahead to discuss all the features of, um, you know, Adam Rube Sign Language and the deaf um, in Adam Rube and the deaf in Ghana. All right. So it's my pleasure to introduce to you Mary Edward. Hello. My name is Mary Edward and I'm a sign language researcher. Today, I'm here to continue the series on indigenous hands and indigenous voices brought to you by Save the Deaf and Endangered Languages Initiative. The focus of this session is to present information about Adambrobe Sign Language. Adambrobe Sign Language is an indigenous sign language used in a village in Ghana. In this talk, I seek to give a brief background information on Adam Brobe's sign language, its uses, my research and documentation work on the sign language. Adam Brobe is located in the eastern region of Ghana and is noted for its high rate of genetic deafness. The major spoken language in Adam Brobe is Akam and the Kwapimchi dialect is spoken there. Other languages are used by the few minority of the community and these include Adam Rube Sign Language, Ghanaian Sign Language, Ga, Ewe, Krobo and English. The linguistic diversity of the communities as a result of the migration of people into the community and this migration is caused by the need for work and other social factors like marriage. Now I move on to give a brief background on Adam Brobe Sign Language. Adam Brobe Sign Language is also known as ADASL or ADASL. ADASL is an indigenous village sign language used in Adam Brobe. Village sign languages, according to Mayor et al. 2010, develop within small communities of villages with high rates of uh, genetic deafness. The Adamrobe community is noted for its unusual high incidence of hereditary deafness at an estimated rate of 1.8% of the total population. And this was a current research I did in 2015. In 2007, when Victoria Ness went to Adamrobe, she found 2% of the total people being deaf. The reduction of the number of deaf people is believed to have resulted from laws instituted by a formal chief that prevented marriages between two deaf people. And this can be found in research works done by Victoria Ness, Annalise Custis, and my research. Again, the migration of different people into the community has increased the number of people there thereby making deaf people in the minority. 
other cell or other mobile sign language. It's an endangered sign language because over the years, deaf children from Adam Robe have attended a boarding school for the deaf in Mampong, Equapim, which uses Ghanaian sign language. And the children are gradually shifting from other cell to Ghanaian sign language. And research works on Adam Robe by Victoria Nist and Edward prove that. Visit to the community over the last few years have revealed a gradual decline in the use of Adambobe sign language by both hearing and deaf people. In other words, the young deaf adults prefer to use Ghanaian sign language among themselves. The older deaf people prefer to use Ghanaian sign language when they want to hide information from the hearing signers. And the majority of the people in Adambobe now do not sign. I want to talk briefly about the marriage law of Adam Robert. So Adam Robert had a marriage law in the past that prevented deaf deaf marriages, that is two deaf peoples from getting married and research on this has been published widely by Annalise Custer's Victoria Ness. And the reason for this marriage law is believed to be attributed to the genetic counselling that was given based on a medical outrage in Adam Robert carried out in the late 1970s. Although this law is not as binding as it used to be, it has resulted in several childless marriages among deaf couples in Adam Robert. That is, deaf couples still marry, but they avoid having children. Several researchers have given indication that abortion is being used as an alternate means to get rid of deaf babies. Again, stigmatization of deaf Adambrobians is largely attributed to the marriage law and the need not to have more deaf children in Adambrobe. In other words, when a deaf lady gets pregnant, there is commotion in the community. Everyone wants to know who is responsible for this child. If the news comes out that this deaf lady is impregnated by a hearing man, it's good news. However, if it is found out that she was impregnated by another deaf man, it's a bad news. Why? Because they believe that the deaf men carry the deafness genes. So it seems to be automatic to them that the deaf men will automatically give birth to deaf children. Again, there are instances in Adam Robert now, according to some of the deaf women I interviewed, who had relationships with deaf men and had deaf children and had other relationships with hearing men and had hearing children. So we can stand on this claim that maybe the deaf men carry the deaf gene, but is that enough to ban deaf people from having marital rights? Anyway, I just want to move on to talk of the presence of Ghanaian Sign Language and Akan in Adam Robert. So Adam Robert Sign Language is independent of Ghanaian Sign Language and of the surrounding spoken language which is Akan. There is some influence of Akan on the structure of ADSL and this is because the language is used by both deaf and hearing users. For example, the sign for sign or sign language in Adam Robert sign language is basically something like this. But the sign for sign language in Ghanaian sign language is sign language. So you can see that we are dealing with two different languages, not one. Again, the sign for man and woman in Ghanaian sign language, man, woman. But in Adam Robert sign language, man, woman. So two different sign languages. So we are not dealing with the same sign language. Akan, the majority spoken language in Adam Robert, is a quiet language which is known for its noun classes, grammatical nouns, and serial verb constructions. 
and research on different sign languages have demonstrated the presence of serial verb constructions in sign languages. Specifically, the, the structure of the serial verb constructions in Adambrobe, according to NIST, matches the structure of the serial verb constructions used in Akan. Another research by Miles in 2004 reports that the deaf people in Adambrobe are the first substantial group of African people known to have used a formal sign language. Alright. You've heard it all. Um, I'm, I'm going to just do a recap of a couple of things that you know struck me while Mary was introducing to us at the Murabe Sign Language. One of the things that struck me is the um, the issue of deafness, how it occurs in the Murabe Village, and the idea that a, if a deaf lady would marry a deaf man is a bad news but if marriage happens between a deaf woman and a hearing man is good news um it, looking at this from the social construct and also from the cultural perspective i i think it it, it requires you know further discussion which is not what we're going to be doing here today but just let you know that struck me um, the second thing that I think that she led emphasis upon it today is to let us know that uh, the Murabe sign language is different from Ghanaian sign language. That is to say that um, from the discussion, uh, the Murabe sign language is one of the indigenous sign languages, which Ghanaian sign language is not. So I, I like us to um, you know get this understanding. So. Mary represented Ghanaian Sign Language as um, a national sign language of um, the deaf people in Ghana, which might be equivalent to the um, school sign language that we talk about in Nigeria, which is a product of a mixture of ASL and English, which in most times could be described as signed English. Well. That is not the topic of today, and I wouldn't want to um, um, bore you a lot with um, re-emphasizing what Mary has discussed. So um, by next week, we are going to continue this episode, and uh, we will learn more about Abdan Robe Sign Language and Abdan Robe Deaf Community. And remember, this is Indigenous, hence the Indigenous Voices, where we discuss issues concerning indigenous sign languages of African deaf communities and uh, the purpose of this series is to continue to bring the indigenous sign languages into the new media and to give them a space you know to compete with other developed sign languages and also the deaf people who use these sign languages and I want to appreciate you for continuously following us and also liking our videos but if you have not please go ahead and like this video and also subscribe to our channel um i will see you next week stay safe until then bye